I'd like to welcome everyone to the Four River Conservation Commission meeting uh, for April 1st, 2019 at the first floor hearing room, one government center, Fall River. And pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Well, one on the agenda is a notice of intent filed by SiteTech Incorporated on behalf of the owner applicant Highland Farms Development LLC regarding a project located at 2691 Highland Avenue Assessors Map U158 to construct a single family dwelling and associated grading and utilities within the 100 foot buffer zone to a vegetated wetland. All work falls within the approved limit of work previously approved during the subdivision permitting file number SE24720. Good evening for the record. My name is Dan Aguiar. I'm a senior project manager at SciTech Engineering with addresses here in the city as well as Dartmouth and Marshfield. Um, the application before you is with regards to lot two, which is located within the Highland Farms subdivision. You've seen a number of the lots um, permitted uh, within this subdivision that fell within the jurisdiction of the commission. Prior to the uh, permitting of the subdivision, there was an ANRAD that had been filed and it had approved the wetlands line that you see shown on this plan. Subsequent notice of intent and order of conditions issued for the subdivision uh, had a limit of work line. That limit of work line is shown in red on the plan that you see here and shaded in green is the boring vegetated wetland. Uh, to the bottom of it. For orientation purposes, here is Highland Avenue. As soon as you pull into the subdivision, you take a right-hand turn into this first cul-de-sac. This home is built. This is a detention pond that's already been built. What's shaded in yellow on this plan was grading that was permitted on the subdivision application. Um, so that grading will not change. That was for the purposes of uh, flood storage uh, having to do with Steep Brook that is just to the uh, west of our site. So the permitted activities that we're here for this evening are the single family home that you see shaded in pink, the grass area shown in green around that. There is a single family uh, home that will be built. The driveway you'll see heading out to Steep Brook and this dark bold line would be the limit of the 100 foot buffer zone. So this is the activity that we're here to permit this evening. Again, this area has currently been constructed and permitted under the previous notice and intent. Roof drain dry wells are being proposed and this plan will need to go through site plan review um, with the various municipal departments uh, upon your either approval or denial. That's all. If you have any specific questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Any questions? Hmm. I'd like to know what the, uh, um, who's the current owner? Of this development? Yep, of this particular house. It would be Highland Farms Development LLC, uh, which is a, basically a subsidiary of Bristol Pacific Homes. Got it. They, they own all of the lots in the subdivision. They've built all of the homes in the subdivision. Right, and they purchased them from the previous owner. That's correct, which would have been St. Vincent's home, would have been the original oh, owner of that parcel. they purchased them from St. Vincent's? Correct. Okay. Yeah. This is an ongoing subdivision that I'm involved with. Um, all the all the uh, the standard conditions are still in place, uh, and like uh, Dan has stated, that we have approved uh, the work uh, continuing continuing going on moving forward. So this is just another one of the the houses that are being built there under the uh, the old order of conditions. Yeah. Is the house itself within the buffer zone? Correct, yes it is. Just about the entire lot is in the buffer zone. Yes. Oh. Mr. Roth, any questions? Uh, no, if you decide to approve it, I recommend you use the standard conditions such as, you know, the uh, silt fence, it's already going to go through site plan review. Uh, I think it's, and silt fence pretty much the only one. Yeah, it's a silt fence. And it's uh, actually installed. It's already. still it's yeah. still in, it's still in place, and they've they've maintained it throughout the construction of the entire subdivision. I I basically go there just about every day. Um, there's activity going on, either the drain leaders 
uh, going in into uh, uh, a system that uh, collects the water so uh, from the roof drains so and also I do all the inspections on the uh, the sewer and uh, water so uh, it's pretty standard does the roof drains look like it's really working well so yeah I mean yeah. If, if, if you were if you remember during the permitting of this we had a n number of neighbors yeah. that had super concern about the amount of flooding that had taken place along Highland Avenue, yeah. which we had basically had stated, we didn't agree that that ever occurred. However, when you have abutters, they create the, the issue to be as most difficult as possible. So we had designed the subdivision um, roadway system, drainage systems, detention ponds uh, to handle stormwater runoff generated from all the way up from Driftwood all the way down to Steepbrook. I think there's a total of seven or eight detention ponds within this development. Totally over designed. <coughs> Those detention ponds were also designed to accommodate roof areas. However, there is a recharge requirement under the Wetlands Protection Act that even though you're handling runoff, you still need to promote groundwater recharge. That's why each one of these homes is required to have uh, a system that can hand, will take the first three and a half inches of water and be able to store that volume and allow it to infiltrate into the ground. That's the purpose of it. It wasn't for runoff control that we needed the infiltration, it was for uh, infiltration systems to, to meet that mitigation for infiltration of the subdivision. Uh -huh. That's all. And yeah, they've, they've worked well. And if we had a giant storm, let's say some, something like we had five or six, seven years ago, would it handle it? Yes. Um, the individual homes in their roof drain drywall, that system, there are overflows. So anything over three and a half inches, yeah ends up overflowing, works its way down to the detention ponds. We've had some pretty substantial rains, even over the last year or two since this has been built. And if you look at the detention ponds, because all the infrastructures and in, detention ponds are in, outlet structures, structures are in, I can't, I don't, I've been there during the middle of heavy storms and within 20 hours afterwards, I've never seen those ponds have more than a foot of water in them, foot and a half, and they have the ability to probably just store four or five feet of water. So. As far as stormwater management goes, this received, you know, an exorbitant amount of attention during the permitting of it. Um, so that you I see I, the problem is that I wasn't around for the permitting. I mean, you're saying you keep referring to stuff that was in the past. That was right. a different set of. I was just simply not on the conservation. Right. No. Commission. No. I understand, but that's that's the subdivision. Right now, we're talking about just one single family home. Right. I'm give, I'm telling. I'm explaining to you what how this subdivision was designed and that the drainage system is so overkill that okay. you, you would never, you asked me if in a big rainstorm, right. what would happen. Um, I did, and I, yeah. I appreciate your... I don't think, I can't imagine that there would ever be an issue out there um, I, I just with stormwater runoff. No, that... Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, so can I get a motion? Um, on this uh, notice of intent uh, that the standard procedures that are in place already um, are, are there and that uh, we get a, uh, a positive termination. Make a, a motion for the standard conditions, so friends. I'll second. All in favor? So voted. Thank you. It's a no. Have a good evening. That's a no. No. Uh, three, you guys have a good night. Okay, next on the agenda is a notice of intent filed by owner applicant Precision Realty Properties LLC regarding project located at 300 Current Road, Assessors Map Z3104, to construct a building addition elevation of an existing concrete pad and improvement of an existing detention basin located partially within the 100-foot border vegetative wetland buffer zone, <coughs> file number SC24721. Good evening, uh, for the record, uh, Mike Russell, I'm a principal with uh, Site Design Engineering. Could you speak a little loud, more loudly? Mike Russell, I'm a principal with Site Design Engineering, offices 11 Cushman Street in Middleborough. Uh, here tonight on behalf of Precision Realties Property, 
I have uh, representatives from uh, the applicant's representatives are here. Uh -huh. William Bossy, owner, co-owner. And Jeffrey Aruda, co-owner. <coughs> so this uh, application is for a notice of intent uh, to construct a 6,000 square foot building addition, uh, which is the primary activity uh, within the um, wetland buffer. Also, there will be minor site improvements. They're going to raise an existing concrete pad six inches, adjust the frame and grate on the only drainage structure on the property uh, accordingly, and also make some modifications to an existing detention basin, which is on the west side of the property, which is also within the wetland buffer. Um, there, this site was uh, originally constructed in 1998. Correct. There, thereabouts. Oddly enough, there's no file on the <laughs> on the property uh, within with the building department, planning, or zoning uh, that was uh, uh, requested, and uh, uh, oddly enough, doesn't exist. So, in any event. Uh, we had uh, identified a, a BBW here. Uh, uh, ecosystems had uh, uh, done a flagging, a delineation of the wetland, as you can see. It essentially goes around the existing limit of disturbance for the, uh, for the property. Uh, that uh, flag line is denoted with the 100-foot uh, buffer. The majority of the building addition is located inside the buffer. Uh, the construction uh, is going to be, and material is going to be light kind uh, material. The ridge line and the existing roof essentially runs north and south. We're going to continue that ridge line. Uh, there is not a gutter system currently for the building, so there's a, you'll notice a stone spreader on the east side of the building here, that's going to remain. We're going to improve that and provide a perforated drain, which will collect that runoff, store it. We're adding some more stone, and then it will overflow into this existing swale that runs along current road. Uh, we're just providing for uh, erosion control purposes, not so much runoff because of the way the ridge line runs on the roof. A, uh, spreader on the north side of the building. But there, beyond that, there is no proposed site improvements uh, for this building addition. Uh, the existing drainage basin um, currently does not take a lot of water. Uh, there's very little pavement and very little roof area that, that uh, drains and it sheet flows to the basement. There's no hard piping into that. So to accommodate this, the western, westerly half of the proposed building, we are proposing a gutter system along the westerly side to, to carry that roof water down to the north, uh, southwest corner and continue its current discharge, um, which is across the, uh, across the pavement into that. <laughs> to do that, to meet some of our runoff requirements, uh, we, had to make, uh, we had to enlarge it slightly. So our closest location to the BVW is uh, six feet. Uh, we've established an erosion control line around the perimeter of the property, perimeter of the, the construction activities, and also the uh, existing limits of disturbance. Uh, as mentioned before, for recharge purposes, we're providing uh, a stone trench with a perforated pipe in this uh, spreader along the easterly side with overflow to the um, drainage swale along current, end, current road. Excuse me. That's the, uh, that's the proposed activity uh, in a nutshell. I'm happy to take any questions the commission members might have. Mr. Rotha, I believe the city engineer had some, had some questions uh, on this, uh, on the drains. Uh, yeah, I, I spoke with the city engineer. He's unavailable. He, he's actually up at a council meeting right now, <laughs> and he couldn't attend. I know that Jr. Yeah, um, he just this afternoon got the what was it the appendix, the hydrocat analysis. Yeah, he he had called me maybe an hour and a half before the meeting as my first uh, interact. This is under um, site plan review as well. This is under site plan review. He called this morning, uh, this afternoon, I believe. 
about an hour and a half oh, in advance of this meeting. So I provided him what he needed, but uh, right. apart from Mr. Fry, I have not received any correspondence or comments right. from any of the city officials for the site plan review part of the process. Right. We were holding off until uh, okay. compiling everything and holding that off. I We run site plan review out of planning. Sure. So we were, we're holding off. Um, Mr. Fry did have some um, uh, concerns regarding the, the drainage and as you say, some of it sheet flows in. Um, he um, uh, questioned some of the analysis and wanted to, you know, actually talk with you about it uh, and go over some of the engineering with you. Yeah, he just he wanted some uh, our software output right. to assess the model that we created. Right. Uh, there was no further discussion and. Uh, Right. Uh, he said he may have some suggestions, but I think his first uh, goal was to understand the model. Correct. You know. um, he, he made it a point before I uh, came to the meeting that he would like to have more input on the, uh, the existing drain and any other uh, drainage that uh, control that may need to be uh, talked about, and he'd like to you like to have some discussions on that. Yeah. And some of the things are, is like you're, you're raising the catch basin. Is this a deep sump catch basin? It's Does it not, not deep sump hood? Um, things that can be are, you know, improvements that can be made that are to a practical, mm -hmm. oh, the city engineer is actually here. So I'll, I'll let him yeah. kind of go over it. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Fry? May I approach? Yes. Yep. Sure. We just started talking about your concerns Welcome. on the uh, on the drain, the drainage. So, J.R. Fry, I'm the city engineer for Fall River, um, and I was going over the project this afternoon um, and reviewing it. And the issue that kind of popped out to me was with respect to the site design, are we demonstrating that we're doing the maximum extent practical to meet the uh, stormwater management conditions? So there really isn't a discussion of infiltration uh, within the project. And um, in terms of BMPs, we don't know, or at least it wasn't apparent to me from the plan, what the existing condition of the catch basin is. So is there a sump in the catch basin? Is the catch basin hooded to prevent spill I capture? I, I can tell you it's it's not a deep sump hooded catch basin. It's what you would call an unconventional structure. Isn't it a little catch basin that's there? Or a historic that, yeah. yard. It's a, it's a historic yard drain. Yeah, it's, it's basically about, for when That's probably the best way to describe yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And then in terms of the discharge from the detention basin itself, um, it appears to be more or less an uncontrolled, open-ended, eight-inch outlet. Is that accurate? Um, I don't know about uncontrolled, but, but you know, what we were providing was basically more storage in the basin by reconfiguring it. Uh, stabilizing the slope and providing a, an overflow weir in addition to its primary outlet. Uh, how is the outlet pipe being adjusted? If you're raising the uh, the discharge, the, the invert in the basin? It, it's being... Uh, I don't... I don't believe we are proposing to mod to change that because it looks like there's a handful of tenths that it that the outlet is at a handful of tenths above the the basin invert itself there was maybe 1500 cubic feet of storage right, below the invert so something like that done. yeah we're not pro we're not proposing to raise the pipe is that what you're asking right no, it's going to remain. The only the only change to outlet control is is an overflow weir. Is providing a, a design an engineered overflow weir. Correct. Okay. So we're reshaping the basin to get more volume in there, but for 
for uh, overflow emergency control, we're just adding the the weir. Okay. Not not a pipe adjustment. So. Yeah, in terms of the submission, that's what I was basically looking at was, are we doing what, whatever we need to do to meet the stormwater management, um, uh, stormwater guidance manual uh, to the maximum extent practicable? And that wasn't fully addressed within the submittal. Um, this falls in a little bit of a, um, gray area it's not fully a redevelopment but it's also not um a green space development so it's because because what we are doing is adding impervious area to an undeveloped portion of the site but but roof area well right roof, roof area. area so yeah. the pre pre-treatment is not you know we're doing rechar well we're uh, from my point of view, mm -hmm. it's to the maximum extent practical. We're not, we're not. Other than the other than the building addition, uh, there's no expansion of of site disturbances. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's roof water. Uh, it's not pavement uh, in the way of. Uh, that's why one reason we didn't elect to put in a, a deep sump and replace the structure that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, if the commission so chooses, happy to take that as a condition. I'm sure the applicant would uh, be more than happy to uh, put that in. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, that basin was kind of misplaced when they did this in the late '90s. It does yeah. not take on much water, um, but the water it does take on, and what we're uh, proposing to do, we're, we're kind of hamstrung by area. So there's a lot of ledge out here. There's high groundwater, uh, particularly in the area of the of the basin. That's why we elected to go with the practice that we did, uh, which we felt addressed uh, the recharge and, and management of, of runoff rate adequately. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this particular area, I mean, a wetland, the, the the closest point to the to of the uh, building addition to the nearest wetland flag is about 45, just under 46 feet, uh, and we did not want to trigger any zoning uh, relief, uh, as we tried to conform as much as we could to uh, the zoning ordinance, and then meet the stormwater management standards to the maximum extent practical. But it is uh, it is roof area. Uh, we're maintaining all of the uh, drainage patterns. We're not, uh, and everything is directed to the applicant's property, you know, which is about 50% wetland. Mm -hmm. How much of the upper portion of the paved parking lot is essentially country drainage out to the wetland? Can you define country drainage? Uh, no berm, uncontained, it's just sheet flow. flow. I would say there, there is no curbing, correct, on the perimeter of the nope. pavement? That's all sheet flow. No, I'd say about 50% of the sheet flow that we're talking about ends up in the retention pond, and I'd say half of it free flows into the land to the right, what's at the top of that. Right, so, so roof aside, <coughs> yep. all of the surface drainage, there's a, there's a ridge line here in the pavement that basically splits this basin. So uh, on, on either side of it, all, actually all of the pavement, it runs into the swale along current, runs into the basin, or runs into the wetland, or runs into this catch basin. So it's, there's, no, there's no perimeter containment. It's all no curbing at all. Okay. It's all <coughs> sheet flow to the, to the vegetated uh, interface. Yeah, that wetland takes on a lot of rain, uh, runoff water from all the other right. budding properties, too, and all the other parking lots. Yep. It's all the same. Um, other than exterior storage, uh, no industrial activities take place outside? No. We're tr yeah, we're trying to <coughs> limit anything that we do outside by putting the addition on. What yeah, do you that's do? That's the main thing. We're machine manufacturing. Shop. Custom manufacturing. <coughs> manufacturing what? Machine uh, pots, steel. Machine. Steel, steel, aluminum. Okay. Yeah. Stainless steel. And it looks like the plan for this catch basin, what we're kind of calling a catch basin, um, looks like 
you have an approximate location of a outlet pipe that just kind of drains to the wetland? Right. It's uh, you know by by during the survey and by inspection we can't uh, we can't identify it, but the applicant uh, believe we can't identify the outlet either. But it, it is believed to discharge in this general area here. So will you be? We so don't see it. It's not daylighted. We you can see. We can see where it comes out. We so can see, we'll see evidence of the water, but I, I mean, I couldn't identify yeah. an invert there. So will you be putting a larger pipe there, or you just plan on? It's really not even used. It's only there for the winter time when we get heavy snow. There's very poor drainage in that general area, so the parking lot would generally, if we got snow or slush, mm -hmm. and they would do the snow plow, and a lot of times the water wouldn't run off the driveway, uh, you know, the parking lot well enough. So. The guy that did the asphalt, the, the top coat we did maybe, what, four years ago? He proposed, he said, ah, oh, while I'm doing the top coat, I can put you in a drain over here in this area. So when you're working out here with the fork truck, you'll get less snow and ice. Um, but it's really only used, it, it usually only gets used in the wintertime when there's snow and slush on the parking lot. Okay. So as part, so as part of the adjustment to the, yeah. to the rim elevation, that we're calling for the structure to be clean unless the commission wants it replaced for enhanced uh, stormwater quality treatment, then we'll put in a new structure. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the the best management practice would be to, one way or another, attempt to capture everything coming off the pavement, at least used areas of pavement, and get it have it run through some kind of treatment structure. Now, so. if that was, if you could abandon that drain, if you could get more of the paved area into your basin. That's not, that's not practical for what they, uh, they you just paved that how long ago? Well, I, I don't understand because I see all the parking lots, the, the parking lot on the side of us. Um, Arctic freeze, that entire so five or six acre parking lot drains into the same wetlands and so does the eights rubber parking lot. It all drain, all the parking lots drain into that area and it right, flows so well. I just want to stress, there's no new pavement. The only new mm -hmm. impervious area yeah. is roof area. Not, so the water quality question, I mean, I, I, I need to understand that better from the commission on, on why that would be imposed, but um, if uh, if uh, the oh. structure itself is being called into question, mm -hmm. I I would make the recommendation to the applicant to, to replace it. Mm -hmm. so, and, and if and to provide enhanced treatment by the way of a deep sump and a hood or T, I would I would not uh, I would encourage them not to oppose that. I, could, I couldn't no. hear you, sir. I would encourage them not to oppose that. That's. Um, to swap Partic the catch particularly, basin out. Particularly if that, that basin is compromised, you know, compromised structure. Yeah, I, I, okay. Okay. I simply don't understand what you're saying when you've got a double negative in the sentence. And uh, could you say it okay, a little more clearly? An existing a little, a little more clearly for me. I'm from Fall River here. Okay. I, um, uh, there's an existing catch basin there. Yeah. Okay. My. Uh, there's no new pavement being added. The right. only impervious surface that's being added to this site is roof area. Got it. So in terms of water quality treatment for pavement runoff, um, we do not want to uh, propose any new structure. There's no new pavement. But if the commission so inclines would like to see enhanced water quality treatment my recommendation to the applicant is replace that structure with a conventional catch basin that has a deep sump and a hood to hold out floatables, uh, pollutants, um, um, right. give, you know, give a, you know, a clear zone to the, the, junk to the, the discharge. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So Thank you. You're welcome. Now, I had an additional question. <clears throat> Where the you said that you're putting a gutter on this side, and then you said where it was draining, but is it draining, where does the drain come out? Because I can't, I don't the where, where Where does the, where does it? You're, you're proposing sheet flowing 
the roof, clean roof run, runoff, you're proposing sheet flowing it over the parking lot. That's what it does now. Okay. All right. So we're taking, as I mentioned, the ridge on this building, on the existing building, runs north and south. The addition will continue that ridge line. Right. All right. The westerly half of this building, half 3,000 square feet, we want to em employ a gutter system from the northwest corner all the way down to its last downspout, which is about a quarter of the way, 20% of the way up the westerly building elevation. Okay. Right now, the, the applicant can explain how they, I think they've tried a few different iterations over the years to mm -hmm. discharge that roof water because there are some, there's some HVAC equipment here. Uh, they do have a curb here to contain uh, essentially for wheel stops, I guess, if nothing yeah, else. Um, uh, it was proposed originally yeah. in 98 for whatever reason. So it's, it functions as wheel stops for, for these cars along the front of the building. But they have the uh, discharge from that downspout through that curbing, if you will, and it sheet flows across the parking lot to that basin. So we want to carry continue. So it's 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 on the other side of the, it's in the drainage basin that goes to the bay. It's in the drainage area that goes to the basin, not to the street. Correct. Correct. Goes to the basin, and that's where we want this three thousand square feet, or half the building, to go to the basin. Thus, that's why we expanded the basin to deal with that. The other half goes to this stone trench system for storage, recharge, and overflow into the existing swale along current. So that's your storm, that's how the stormwater management system is divided. So the pavement, you know, it's nothing new. We're, we're maintaining those drainage patterns. We're not uh, proposing uh, any grading there, any cuts, any excavation. Um, uh, the only, uh, uh, outside of sheet flow, the only collection practice that's here is that catch basin. So it's, uh, but it's not a catch basin that, if this was new construction, that would be proposed. You know, it's a it's an unconventional structure. Any other questions? So would you would you agree, Mr. Fry, that we should put the uh, the in the orders of conditions that we put the uh, deep sump and change this structure here? It's, um, some of this issue is going to come up again, or may come up again under site plan review. Um, Is it possible to get the, so it's already, you've already got the gutter pitched to the south, correct? Pitched to the south, yes. Is it possible to get it to, is it vegetated to the front of the building? Vegetated, no, this is pave, pavement runs right out to the, to the corner, the southeast corner of the building. Okay. Yeah. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It, the pay, it's about to the it, center of the building. It is vegetated uh, about three quarters of the front of the, the south end, south elevation is vegetated. But there are, there's an electric line there. Um, Possibly a building entrance. Uh, that's, yeah. no, that's over <coughs> in the southwest corner here. Yeah. So. But again, the, I mean, what are you getting at? I, I think it's just a different practice or experience um, where I could, I'd actually remove the roof runoff from what is going into a treatment system in order to reduce the volume that the treatment system is seeing. If it's all, if, if we stipulate that it's clean, <coughs> then you put it as quickly as possible, either groundwater or 
Okay, I think I follow you. So, so to um, to uh, to take the mixing with pave uh, the runoff from the pavement. So yeah. you discharge it at the building, and you're picking up that. You're increasing. That's what I got at. You're taking clean water, and you're running it across a dirty parking lot yeah. into your system. That, that's a fair point, and that was actually talked about in the beginning part of this process. But they had just paid this, and it, we didn't want to we didn't want to open up the pavement and put a pipe in there, but. Um, uh, I'd like these gentlemen to hear that just in case they want to consider doing that if it's if it gets them to the finish line a lot faster and the only other thing is if you've got a, a poorly functioning catch basin that isn't necessarily serving your purpose I wouldn't necessarily want you to put in a new catch basin that's you know whatever up to speed but still isn't going to it collect a lot of drainage. That's not necessarily helping. Um, I don't know if the grades quite work. That's the problem. You know, that's a low point. I mean, they are proposing to raise that concrete yeah. uh, in that area, but that does that get you 100% sheet flow where you could abandon that basin? I'm not so sure it does. I think it would require a little more surgery in this area, and we're trying to avoid having to modify the site because mm -hmm. of the close proximity to the wetlands. He said that basin that we're talking about was only put in there because in the winter time we had poor drainage with snow. And you'd get a sheet with of ice snow. right there. That they 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 couldn't push all the snow to the front of our building. Yeah. They push all the snow to the northerly side of the building, and when they do so, it creates drainage problems because of all that snow. So they proposed putting that in and it's worked fine, but it's only for snow melt, that's it. Okay. No water in our parking lot runs into that basin down the bottom on the normal rainfall. I mean, I guess uh, to your point, uh, Mr. Fry, if that, uh, if this got elevated here, uh, this concrete pad, um, I'm looking at all of these spot grades here. If this were to be eliminated, uh, there is probably, uh, outside of this limit of, of pavement, just before you get into the uh, tree line, it's possible to do another stone type spreader there uh, that would uh, act as a filter strip, you know, that um, would certainly be better than what's there now. This big, it doesn't have a sump or a. Right. Um, and um, um, might be able to be considered in lieu of a, a traditional catch basin, just an idea, but it looks like there is, because that, that, would, uh, that would address a small area. I mean, I would say probably, um, if I had to guess, probably on the order of four or 5,000 square feet. Yeah. Um, and the only other thing that I was even thinking might be appropriate would be where you have that sheet flow into the grass. Here. So this would be now nah, the north that, nor that north piece of the parking lot. I don't know if you again, I don't know if you can if the grades end up working or not to even have a very shallow um, one foot wide swale that could bring it around to the basin. That would not work. No, definitely that's not. That's that sits low. down quite a bit lower. Quite, very low. Yeah, we again. It's it was kind of <laughs> kind of looking at this, and it was kind of funny how it ever got mm -hmm. built this way because this yeah. this basin should have been over here. Yep. But they built it here, and that's why we're having to come up with you know, transmitting roof water all the way to the front of the site because it's the basin really got misplaced to begin with. Could be, there could have been a good reason, but unfortunately there was no file on this um, where we could investigate the, the history with the, with the city. So again, you know, because of the proximity to the, to the limit of disturbance to the wetland, um, high groundwater ledge we just elected to not to just to work with the existing basin and kind of enhance what is there how they deal with the roof runoff that is there now thus I, th I think it's to the maximum extent practical but if 
if uh, going back to this, the one improvement that I can see, I mean, the, the ridge line kind of works against you a little bit, uh, and the utilities up front in terms of utilizing this, but the numbers work too, just to remind everybody that the analysis works. Um, if this was to be omitted, um, and because this is where we are asking to raise this area as part of this application, some sort of filter practice along that edge inside the erosion control line, I think is a reasonable um, plan B if, if the commission members. So direct the sheet flow that way? Well, kind of, it system. kind of goes there now. So Changing uh, the gutter system from the front to the back? I'd say whatever, so this ba where this basin is, okay, if I were to put a filter strip here, it's still within the watershed of the basin after the, after the concrete gets raised. So I don't, think, I don't think that would alter the drainage patterns where if this goes away, then all of a sudden uh, the water gets reproportioned. I don't think that's going to happen because this is, in, this is in the direct flow line to the basin and I'm putting, suggesting a filter strip behind the basin in the flow line. But you're not proposing changing the, the gutter outlet from the roof? Pitching it the uh, other well, way? That, that's, that another, that's another question. That's, uh, no, I, I didn't know if that's what you're talking about. No, no, no. The, the gutter, I, I'm, still, I'm still proposing to, to run that the, roof To the water. front and then run it across the parking lot. Have you, what about um, modifying your outlet structure? Because you've got, you've got it this way to where it comes up. What are those, um, JR? Whether you did it as a standpipe, like a standpipe kind of outlet control, where you'd have in the basin, in, in the, the basin, basin, and then you more then you're quality. taking then you're taking your clean water, which you're running across your dirty parking lot, you know that they consider dirty, into this, but you don't have, but if you had modified your outlet structure to a standpipe. And then you would you would get that would be some of the maximum extent practicable practicable to getting better water quality out of the thing. Um, I agree that that would uh, give you a little better water quality. The question then becomes about the rate and volume. But you are buffered by a wetland. My my initial thought to that is you probably wouldn't meet your meet your flows because, well, first of all, the, ba the basin is going to get overcapacitated quickly. That, Believe it or not, that's a very, very shallow basin. I mean, it's only a few feet deep. Um, Reviewing the numbers, it was very tight. It was right up to the 25-year flow. That's, so a standpipe and, and modeling that, just thinking about that, probably would, would affect those numbers. Yeah. Uh, but if the commission agrees that okay, we're still within the realm of uh, maximum extent practical and, and your goal is water quality, uh, you know, that'd be something to consider. And that's a pretty inexpensive solution to, to, to that problem as opposed to, I just want you guys to understand, as opposed to hard piping that, making a, a, a cut through the parking lot and then patching it and having the discharge into the basin. So. Um, what they're talking about is in the basin itself, all right, you have a standpipe. You're basically trying to get the water, you're trying to increase the water level in the basin so that you get more settling of particulates um, and then the clean water will overflow into the standpipe and then go out, okay? So that's probably a little more cost effective mm -hmm. to get the same result as mm -hmm. opposed to going, opening up the pavement to hard pipe it. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I'm not an engineer, but I sit next to him. <coughs> <laughs> and I can see the same. He's here. Huh? He's here in the I backyard. can see the same. I sit, I sit <laughs> next to one, and I know enough to be dangerous. And we've had conversation this afternoon about all of the different mm -hmm. options. Um, Mr. Chairman, it, would be, it seems like there needs to be, this is not going to be something, we're rewriting the plan at the meeting. <coughs> It's what it seems like. Well, my suggestion was going to be. we lay it over for a month. Well, my suggestion was going to be that, you know, the standard order con conditions apply and that uh, until the site plan review and a drainage issue 
and the overflow issue is addressed to the satisfactory of the city engineer that um, it can be added added to uh, what we approve tonight under standard conditions and that the fun, we, we won't make a, a final determination until the engineering department and the site plan review is okay with the... It's concluded. Uh, <coughs> well, my recommendation is just to continue to the next meeting to figure out, you, the city engineer, myself, figure out yeah. and look at the engineering on either the standpipe or, or, or the water quality issue. Once we do that, come back, get the approval, and then also those revised plans will go to site plan, and then you can go right through. That's uh, so it, 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 That well, I, I can't make a motion like I that. So but that would be <laughs> that would be my I recommendation. Be that way, we're not trying to design it tonight, or we're not holding it off, and the commission hadn't seen what the city engineer and ultimately my department through site plan approves. I would be more comfortable continuing it, trying to figure out the water quality aspect, whether it's the sandpipe, you know, and then get that approved, hopefully at the next meeting, then those can be revised to site plan and then you can get through site plan pretty quickly. Fair enough. We, we just want to know where we stand uh, with the margin because the applicants have a very aggressive timeline. Yeah. They want to get this thing up and um, uh, we were hopeful that we'd be a little bit more advanced to this point in site plan review, but unfortunately we uh, were not. So, but it's good that Mr. Fry uh, has relayed his um, concerns. I, I personally think they're all very simple to address. Mm -hmm. I think there are a few choices to be made, and I want to discuss that with the applicants to um, so that they understand and that, that we can make a decision. And if I'm uh, I can communicate with Mr. Fry uh, on that. Uh, it sounds like the commission is going to rely on on his recommendation uh, to that point specifically, if I'm if I'm hearing everybody correctly, and uh, we can come to the next meeting and, and hopefully uh, have a have a, an agreed upon resolution. So it, next meeting is when? Just so the applicants. May six. May six. It's the first. First Monday. Of the month. Monday. But I have a motion to uh, table this until our uh, May 6th meeting. Make a motion to table to May 6th. I'll second, second that. All in favor? Aye. So voted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. What we can do also is if we come to the resolution and you get it in for this, we also do it with site plan. We should have site plan pretty much ready to go. I can't, we can't approve site plan until this is done. But we could have site plan literally ready to go if this is approved on the 6th and all the plans have been re-reviewed. Then that week, you could get your CONCOM approval and your site plan one, two, and out. For, from, from our standpoint, to that day, there's no problem. I'm trying to, stuff, we're trying to, we're trying to accommodate you. Yeah, that. yeah. That we'll, we'll, we will be absolutely ready to, uh, okay. to have that okay. and, and get it uh, so that there's no delays. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because half of site plan review is sitting here, which would be JR and myself. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is the notification uh, notice of intent filed by Geyser. Is this the one I'm looking at? Yeah. yeah. Uh, filed by Geyser Engineering Corp. on behalf of owner applicant Joe Flynn and Odelia Fernandez regarding project located at Lake Ave. Assessors map D216 to construct a single family dwelling and repair an existing stone revetment wall abutting the South Wartupa Pond, file number SC24. All right, good afternoon, board members. My name is Emmanuel Pacheco. I'm here along with my colleague, Mr. Stephen Bogle, PE. Uh, we're representing Geyser Engineering, 227 Wampanoag Trail, Riverside, Rhode Island. Uh, we're here on behalf of the applicant, Mr. and Mrs. Fernandes. Uh, also pre pre present is uh, Ms. Fernandes in, in the audience. Uh, we're here today in regards to the notice of intent, which was filed for the property on uh, Lake Ave. 
uh, owned by the applicant. As described in the notice of intent, the applicant is proposing to construct a single family residential dwelling and repair an existing riprap revetment wall, which abuts south of Top Pond. Um, at this time, the proposed site plan submitted as part of the notice of intent, site plans prepared by Gordetsky Engineering, have gone through planning board review and have received conditional approval subject to the Conservation Commission's approval of the project. Uh, I do have a copy of the condition, conditional planning board approval letter. If any board members would like to take a look at that as well. Um, if there are any additional questions, please let us know. Um, it did go through uh, site plan review. Uh, it was conditioned that they needed a uh, conservation um, conservation commission approval, and that if any changes to the site plan from conservation would require them to go back to your site plan. Um, I advised Mr. Gordetsky to do CONCOM first. They didn't choose, so they're running the risk that they may have to redo site plan if something changes. However, in this case, um, you know, it's a single family lot. It's on South Watapa. They're looking at fixing the, the revet. Or the, yeah, the most people call it a seawall, even though it's not, not a sea. sea. <laughs> even though it's not a sea, I say revetment, and people didn't know what revetment was. And I said, well, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the little retaining seawall uh, along the lake. And they go, oh, they knew exactly what it was. Um, you know, everyone in, along there has it. Uh, I think it's sufficient to, you know, get that repaired. Um, and the uh, house uh, met all the site plan review uh, conditions. I would recommend approval subject to the standard conditions for silt fence, unless the city engineer has any anything. Any comments, Mr. Fry? No comments. No comments. So, so can I get a motion to um, have the standard conditions um, voted on? Make a motion to standard conditions and silt fence. I'll second. And sock. We're using silt fence and sock. Silt fence and sock. Abstain. 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 Okay. Yep. So voted. Yeah. That's because I live close. <laughs> yes, he lives within 300 feet of the pro property. So that's why he's abstaining. For the record, that's just, why he's abstaining. Just outside of the beach. You use such big words. It's not just that I live close. And that's all. I measured it today. Yes, I just yeah. turned yeah. on the aerial. I didn't measure it. I walked by. it. <laughs> <laughs> walked through. You need that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Stay. You know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. My kids are more fun. <laughs> Go ahead, take your answers. Okay. Okay. Okay, we have a notice from Bristol County Mosquito Control Project submitted March 21st, 2019, regarding a ditch maintenance project located along Rickenback Road from the Four River Landfill southeast towards Rickenback Road. Roth? Um, the mos their uh, mosquito control, you you've gotten a copy of the letter. They're going to um, maintain, do some of the ditch maintenance, um, some of the drainage channels. When they get overgrown and overflow, they pond up and create, you know, um, uh, they want to keep it more free flowing so it doesn't pond up for possible mosquitoes. Um, this is pretty standard. They do this just about everywhere in the county. Uh, they'll make a motion to place this on fire. But they're not spraying. They're not, no. No, no, they're right. They're, they're, they're cleaning out their drainage ditches. Right. So uh, can I get a motion to uh, place this uh, notice so that, on that would just, just that would go ahead in Mother's, that place, Mother's Brook kind of, wouldn't it? Or just, wouldn't it? Just that, that road that is on the left-hand side. You go down Riggenback Road. You go down Riggenback and it's on the left hand, the drainage ditch. Oh, that's a drainage ditch. It's a drainage yeah, ditch. They're proposing cleaning out the existing drainage ditch to you know, maintain the flow. Uh, the, um, okay, I didn't pick this up before. Okay, so it's not from 
the extension of uh, Meridian Street. No. No. It's nowhere near that. Nowhere near that. No. Nope. Okay. It runs see. right along runs right along Rickenback Road. It'll be it, it, um, it'll be on the uh, here's Rickenback and then it goes Rickenback. Up, this? Okay, so it would be on the uh, be on the west on the west, west side. side of yeah. Rickenback. Be on the west goes, side of Rickenback Road. It goes west to north. Right, Rickenback starts at Meridian Street. No, it's Wilson at, Road. It's Wilson Road. Wilson Road. It's at the yeah. bottom of Wilson Road. Is this what, about what we're talking about? Yeah. And yeah. what will they be? Doing? See, there happen to be spotted turtles there. Well, they're they're cleaning. All they're going uh, they're to be just doing is clean it out. Maintaining. They? They're just cleaning the brush out of the existing ditch. So they don't have water that just sits there, which destroys right, the mosquitoes. Right, it does. They're not going to clean out the turtles. They're just going to. No, they're just cleaning right. out the brush. Any from kind the of ditch. debris that's in there. They're going to be cleaning that out, presumably, just so the water can flow. Presumably they know that. I, okay. Fine. Make a motion and put on five. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Right. So voted. Uh, number five on the agenda is a notification from VHB submitted March 22nd, 2019 regarding Chapter 91 and 401 Water Quality certi Certification Public Notice, Mr. Roth. Yes, the Algonquin Gas Transmission Line. Did I pronounce that correctly? Algonquin Transmission Line. Oh, I'm, 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 you got it. I can pronounce Quickashan and Algonquin. Um, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Right, but that's all right. Huh? Yeah, quicker needs a little improvement. But quick, quick, quick as yeah. Okay, That's much better than the city engineer pronouncing it. Um, this is the uh, they're doing a uh, transmission line uh, under Ma Mount Hope Bay, and um, it's yep. received all the different various approvals. Uh, chapter ninety one. It's filled tidelands, so it's within filled tidelands and within the waterway. Uh, they needed a chapter ninety one and a four. <coughs> Uh, and a 401 water quality certification. This is just notifying us that they have gotten that approval. So I recommend just placing it on file. So can I get a motion to place uh, this on file, number five on file? Make a motion, put on file. Second. Second. All in favor? So voted. Can I get an approval of the minutes for our March 11, 2019 meeting? So move. Second. Move. Second. All in favor? So Aye. voted. Anybody here for public input? I see no one. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. So voted. Thank you. <laughs>